Good morning. Welcome everybody who's here locally in Bilbao and welcome everybody who's online. So um, my name is Eric Nordmark. I am, my day job is at Sadida, uh, same company as Renee who spoke earlier. My other role is um, being part of LF Edge in terms of being on the technical uh, advisory committee as well as sort of driving the, the chairing the, the, the EVE project. Um, so I'm sort of speaking with two hats here. This is mostly about how do we as an, as an uh, LF Edge community make it easier for people to actually deploy and try things out. Um, so that's the topic of my, my presentation. So um, briefly on what we're going to do. Uh, so originally, just to give some background, as of last week, people said, oh, we're going to have everything ready so that you can actually demo the real thing on Monday. And, you know, they had some, some, some hiccups along the way. Um, so I can't go through all of these things, but I'll try to give, give you a feel for what this stuff will look like. So the plan is to have this fully in place in, in a couple of weeks, so early October. But I'll at least walk through and see so you know what exactly coming. So what is exactly the problem? Well, everybody's been using open source one form or another. If you're a developer, you're quite comfortable doing this stuff on your laptop. So you, you know, okay, take Docker as an example, but there's plenty of examples, right? You go and install some packages, you run some Hello World, and now you can actually get up and running, right? Easy, right? Um, if you have a Raspberry Pi lying around and you want to try running Ubuntu or Raspbian on that stuff, okay, you download some image, you burn that onto a micro SD card, you plug it in your boot, okay? It's a bit more work, right? But you get up and running. But inside LF Edge, we have a, a large number of different projects. You might want to try them out, right? You might want to try them out on multiple devices. Okay, first you need to install some OS on those devices. Maybe you also need to put like a Kubernetes Docker runtime on those devices. So you, you do some additional customization and now you're ready to actually go and install the actual project in the form of, of, of some containers or some software you install. And what we would really want to enable is actually that people can try different combinations of these LF Edge projects, right? Out, out, out on, on devices, out at the user edge. Uh, so say you want to do that on 50 devices. Okay, now there's a lot of manual work to make this happen. Uh, so how can we actually accelerate this? And this is, you know, these devices, they might be sitting next to you on your desk in the case of, you know, a few Raspberry Pis or something, but they might be sitting in your lab or if it, you really are sort of want to show how this stuff is working in practice, no, they might be sitting out in the field where they actually are, you know, extracting some data out of the environment they're in, right? So. There might be something that's out at a retail location. You want to just test that it's working or out in some, you know, solar farm, whatever type thing. So how can I actually do this stuff just to experiment, right? It's all about open source experimenting with software out at the user edge. Um, this is this is harder than, than it should be. So, so uh, an example of this stuff is somebody that actually asked earlier this year on, on a Slack channel saying, you know, show me how these pieces actually fit together, right? All of these projects, um, I want to be able to put something together um, and play with it, right? And connecting it to some SCADA controller is sort of just typically an industrial setting in P PLCs, right? Um, and it's you sort of, we're explaining the pieces, but we don't really have a good way of showing that you can actually put these things together and get it up and running. So that's sort of the, the problem that, that people started started chipping away at a couple of months ago, saying, how do we make this stuff easier? Um, so the sort of high level view of what this stuff will be is setting up the sandbox where people can um, get started quickly with this project, right? Develop it, put up demos, right? Try different combinations. And it's not only about this project, by the way. If you take something like Edgex Foundry, at some level, it's an infrastructure for deploying your own sort of, um, uh, your, your own sort of solutions, right? So you might have lots of different variations you want to try out where that uses Edgex Foundry or Acrano or, or Fledge or whatever. And you want to put that together saying, hey, here's actually my own variant of this demo, right? And, and, and try that out. Um, so learn about these things um, and being able to put these things in a, in a marketplace 
that we as a community, as an open source community, is actually controlling, saying, hey, here's something that, you know, somebody tested, right, one of the existing projects, or sort of demos around that stuff or combined use cases um, to put those things up so that once you have tried it, if you're, if you're working on one of these projects, once you've tried it out, you can now actually post it into that marketplace, and now you can use this to show other people potential users as a, as a demo, not only a demo, but you can try it yourself. Just go use that thing from the marketplace. Uh, this is actually something that is something that, you know, Sedita is providing the underlying service, right? But, but it's actually something that's controlled by the community. LFAD is actually setting the policies, what, who is allowed to upload applications and whatever, right? How do they get tested, etc. cetera. So that, that's the, the thing we put together. So, so basically, you can now go and look, just like Arpit has on his slides, right? All of these different projects. Well, now you can just sort of go and click on them saying, this is what I want to deploy. And um, with, with different flavors of it. Um, and they can be, as I said, single projects, right? Combinations of different projects, projects with the particular use cases together, right? Uh, with it and try it out. And the actual thing will look more like this, or at least the starting point is like this, where you have, uh, you know, uh, the set of LF Edge projects that you want to do, but then sort of different, different particular specializations about it. Like a Crano, there's some, you know, these are a bit made up, but an automotive one, some private 5G ones, right? They're different ones that you can actually tell people to go try out. Once you actually have deployed this stuff, through this stuff, you will also see that those things are actually up and running as well. Um, the, you know, the status of the thing that here, there's actually one, one, two devices out there, they're running a total of a one app instance, right? Um, so that's the, the, the overall picture that you can actually get. Um, and um, the, to get started, <clears throat> so there will actually be more detailed documents about the stuff. That's what, what people are working on finishing. But <clears throat> what is required is actually to have a, an LFID, which you can actually sign up and, and get. Um, and then you're creating an account on the actual Sandbox SaaS platform. <clears throat> and then you need some hardware. And here, the community already has some set of hardware as part of the LF Edge community lab. So some of that stuff will be reservable, but you can also bring in your own hardware, including if you really just want to kick the tires from a software perspective, you know, you can run your own sort of Quemu on your laptop, right? But that's not really the deployment environment because now you don't have access to those sensors that actually environment out at the user edge, but you can at least try it out how it works from a, from a, from a software perspective. So, uh, when you go and when you bring in your own hardware, uh, could be a Raspberry Pi or something, right? Could be some industrial PC. Well, you want to make sure that it's on the list that we can actually actually run the stuff on, and then installing the underlying EVOS, which will now actually be the substrate. You can think of this as basically getting a, a, a common platform in place, similar to. If you're running VMware, you put ESXi on the boxes first, and now you can actually run whatever you want. So that's sort of the step there. In the community lab, those things will already be there, and you can just you know, reserve those resources in the lab and then go try it out. Um, so that's the overall flow. And then as part of, um, if you bring your own hardware, right? Um, there's several ways there will be more sort of overall documentation of this stuff. Some of it already exists in the, the e GitHub in terms of how you go and deploy things, but you can install this thing. If you have an industrial PC, you can install things using a USB stick, right? Or any sort of PC server, right? You can also set it up to do iPixie booting, um, where you actually are booting, uh, and booting an installer directly from the, the GitHub, um, the release images. Um, and you can also run this stuff on, on a laptop as sort of like just seeing what the stuff does. So this thing that's here is actually an illustratory example that, that shows that 
you can, in this case, building it for actually from at some level from source, right? Um, pulling things together. Um, the key thing in all of these things is that there is an onboarding step, which is why there's this thing here, soft serial that's actually flagged on this page. So, so when you actually have something that you want to run, that you want to onboard to the SaaS platform, you use either a hardware serial number, the thing that's printed underneath your, your industrial PC or whatever, right? Use one of these soft serial numbers, which is this UUID example here that's created, or you can actually use a device certificate that's created by the device when it's booting the first time. So, as I said, there will be more sort of complete walkthroughs of this stuff in the documentation when the stuff actually get, gets announced. Um, I was actually trying to do this Quema example here, and we'll see if the network is cooperating right now, because it was, it was like half an hour ago, but not 10 minutes ago. Um, Let's see what the stuff, if it actually wants to do, do anything here. The we're, we're at the edge of, of Wi-Fi here. Okay, let's not do the, um, the full clone because that one didn't actually want to work. I have something that is already sitting here. So this is actually creating an installer off of a bunch of, of, of Linux Kit container running that installer and then actually um, what's it called? Um, running the installer and then actually booting the resulting things. Um, so this will take a few minutes. Well, while, while we're watching this stuff actually run by, uh, one of the things, you know, this is all about the user edge, right? This is all about figuring out how do we take open source to the next level. Just like Arpit mentioned earlier, the sort of boundary between, between, uh, I realized I didn't do, do this sort of deeper introduction, but um, the sort of standardization, right? This all uses standards, right? Uh, I've been active in the Internet Engineering Task Force for a long time, sort of standardizing things in the, T in the, the TCP IP, IPv6, a bunch of different protocols there. Um, but this is really about taking that to the next level of saying, how do we leverage these things, in particular the security mechanisms that that you know, bringing this to the next level because building up trust for this stuff out at the edge, well, you need to build things using the state-of-the-art security mechanisms to actually build a system that is, uh, that is sort of trustworthy enough, right? So that's a lot of focus on figuring out what are those components that we can bring in from standards, from existing open source projects and communities to make sure that this, this sort of overall infrastructure is actually is actually trustworthy enough. So, um, but that's sort of the, the, the background of you know, why we're actually doing this stuff. Many people think that, wait, I can just go run Docker or Kubernetes out at the, at the user edge. Well, that misses the whole thing about, oh no, I, let's see if it actually gets past this stuff. Um, but I will continue talking to see if it actually, the, the, the there is, it's not quite set up to run when, when the network is a bit too flaky, but, but um, it did work a bit earlier. But the, the sort of key thing on security is actually making sure that the, the, um, you're, you're considering physical threats. People might have access to these devices out in the field. They might plug in USB sticks, right? They might try to replace the software, take out the disks, do lots of things, right? So. So sort of using the state of the art components to make sure that the underlying infrastructure is that so that the other projects that you run on top of this, the applications, the actual problems that people want to solve. Um, no, I don't think that um, this will work, but um, sorry about that. It was improvising the stuff this morning, but um, that the actual things that people want to want to want to go and install they can actually worry about the the uh, the the applications themselves right the business the business that they're trying oh again i'm in the wrong place the business that they want to try to address we'll see if it comes back a bit later but um so so what are the the next steps here 
Well, if you have things, one second. So, so um, the people working on this stuff, they will finish up the sort of documents around this, they accept the, the policies, use policies, you know, the signups, etc. And if you want to find out about the announcement of this, please join the LF Edge you know, main mailing list to get notifications when the stuff is, is there. If you don't already have LF credentials, you can actually go create those things. I think it just requires an email address. It's been a couple of years since I did this, but... And then if you have some LF Edge projects, right? There's a few people that have all been working on the stuff, but if you have that, as well as sort of demos or combinations that are interesting, well, you can actually see, okay, can I get these things ready? So if, if those things are, you know, in the form of OCI container images or even virtual machine images, uh, then it's actually easy to go and say, okay, can I, can I consider these things for being uploaded? You know, try them out myself, then make them available across the community as part of the sandbox. So, so you can, you can reach out to us if you want to, want to do that, right? Um, on the Slack channel or through, through email as well. So that's the state of things. So, um, so credits to, to Michael Maxey, Joe Pearson, Jim White, Lincoln Lavoie, which I don't know if he pronounces his name in the French or in the anglicized way, but, um, and Kendall, who's been, as well as the LF Edge TAC and the board that have sort of realized that, yeah, we should try to do this stuff to make, make things easier, right? And, and please come and join us to help, help this stuff move forward. So, this was a bit shorter than I had intended because we couldn't quite demo everything, but um, since not everything is in place, we can see if it, the, my, my improvised demo is actually making progress here, but, uh, oops. When can folks expect this to be ready yeah, no, this didn't work. to be used and played with? So, so I, I think uh, they've said in October, right? So it's a couple of weeks out. Um, so you can actually get the, the prepare for the stuff to show up. So, and then we, we, we should actually figure out sort of demoing the actual, actual specific things of, sorry, while well, I'm flip, flipping around here, but, uh, demoing the specific things when it comes to, okay, I want to bring up Edgex Foundry or I want to bring up Fludge, right? Um, walking through those things as well, because there's sort of an other layer because that, the goal is really to get that stuff out there so that people can try out those. Right? Um, Will people be able to try out every LF Edge project? It's, so, it's, so it's up to the, the, the members of the, those projects to sort of do this, you know, bring their images, right? And try them out to make sure that they're in the right format so that they're available and there's, actually going to be a process to getting those things uh, approved by, by the community, right? So as part of saying, hey, uh, you can put this in your own private, um, in your own private part of the marketplace as you're playing with it. And maybe you have a couple of different variants that you want to try, but then sort of requesting, hey, the, the, the LF Edge community, can we actually get this thing to be made available for the, in the marketplace for everybody, right? Um, so, so it's up to them to do a bit of work there. I think that the people that have done it, it's not a lot. It's more about getting the base there, but then saying, okay, do I have my demos, right? Because it's not only about getting something like, you know, Open Horizon. It's also about, okay, do I want to show Open Horizon with some AI application, right? Um, so, so there, those things exist in some places, but they need to be sort of packaged up. Any other questions in the room? Um, it looks like we actually have a question for Renee that came in virtually. Uh, Renee, uh, you are being asked if Project Eve is participating in LF Networking's 5G Super Blueprint. I think this is more a question for Eric. <laughs> you can yeah, I might be better at, at, at answering that. So we, we, we've looked at it, but it, I don't think there's been any sort of deeper work together with the 5G Super Blueprint, uh, not, at least not what I'm aware of. So I think that there's been people that have been paying attention, but not, 
Um, it probably makes sense in terms of figuring out the sort of underlying infrastructure for, for running these other things as part of the blueprint. So we have done some other other um, Ukrainian blueprints around particular things like one with fledge and sort of you know fledge plus e plus infrared cameras so there's something that we did did a couple of years back so great so potentially something we could see moving forward then